Okay, today in class we did conversion factors from chemical formulas. Now we just finished with mass percent to see how much a particular atom contributed to a compound. Now this is a different method where we can use the chemical formula and the relationship between moles of atoms and moles of molecules to determine the relationship of an atom's mass within a compound. So as shown in your book, uh, there are several ways to write ratios and how they contribute to a particular compound, how an atom contributes. So so let's take a look at a couple of examples and We'll do PCL5. So in class, I wrote for one mole of PCL5, we get five moles of chlorine. This five comes from the subscript five in PCL five. Now, the same is true for one mole of PCL five. We get one mole of phosphorus, okay? Let's try another example. Let's take iron three sulfide. So for every mole of this compound, iron three sulfide, There are three moles of sulfur. This comes directly from the chemical formula. So one mole of this, three moles of sulfur. And the same is true for iron. For every mole of this compound, Fe2S3, we will get how many moles of iron? We will get two moles of iron. Now I have a habit of writing the equal sign rather than the proportion sign, but it will all come out the same way. It means the same thing, or you can think about it in the same respect. So let's try a problem using the chemical formula as a conversion factor. I did a couple of these in class already. So I got an email about an hour ago uh, requesting this video as some additional help. So let's try this problem that I just quickly worked out. 
So aluminum oxide, aluminum oxide. So let's figure out how many question mark grams of aluminum are in 25.0 grams of aluminum oxide. So the first thing we want to do is go from grams of aluminum oxide to moles of aluminum oxide. So one mole of Al2O3 gives us one o one point nine six grams extend this on out of al two o three so you should be familiar with how to calculate the molar mass and i'm using two decimal places okay so the next thing is now let me change the color of my pen because I want to highlight this in particular. This is what I want to highlight. So for every one mole of a here for every one mole of Al2O3 we get how many moles of aluminum well from the chemical formula here we see that we get two moles of aluminum so two moles of aluminum would go there Okay, now I can change my color back. So I wanted to highlight that part because that came directly from the chemical formula. That was the part where we used the chemical formula the mole concept from compounds and atoms that make up the chemical formula. So now I want to use the molar mass of aluminum to find the grams. So I say one mole of aluminum is equal to my periodic table. That's one of the reason I put that up there. So you can see where we're getting these numbers. And I'm going to say 26.98 grams of aluminum. So going back here, grams of aluminum oxide, grams of aluminum oxide cancel what we have right here moles of aluminum oxide and moles of aluminum oxide cancel what do we have here moles of aluminum and moles of aluminum cancel so let's see can I highlight this so we're left with a unit of grams of aluminum. Do you see how all our units canceled out and we're left with grams of aluminum which is what we're looking for. So when we do all of this multiplication we wind up with 13.9 grams of a
aluminum. So we can say 13.2 for three significant figures. Okay, so that is one problem using the chemical formula as a conversion factor. Now we used aluminum in that example. So what if we wanted to come right here. What if we wanted to use or find out grams of oxygen. So just say we had Twenty five grams of let me write that a little later. Twenty five grams of aluminum oxide, and we wanted to know how many grams of oxygen are in twenty five grams of aluminum oxide. Well, one thing we can see here is that up to this point everything is the same going from moles to grams of aluminum oxide so the next thing we would do is from our chemical formula we would set up our mole ratio so one mole of aluminum oxide gives us how many moles of oxygen. Well, from our chemical formula, we see we get three moles of oxygen. Okay? Now we would continue on to convert moles of oxygen to grams of oxygen. So one mole of oxygen is equal to what do we have here in the periodic table so we're getting these numbers so that's 16.0 say zero grams of oxygen okay and that equals when we do that multiplication 11.8 grams of oxygen okay so let me emphasize that all these colors here let me emphasize up until here you should be familiar with going from grams to moles. Okay? Now this part is what we learned in today's le lecture. And let me emphasize here that we learned this part in today's lecture. And let me emphasize here that this came from chapter two. So the only new material that we're really using is this piece here. This is the only new material that we're using. If you had a problem going from grams to moles, then you would have difficulty doing this problem. Um, chemistry is cumulative. That is the reason that we did these things in chapter two. One concept is built upon another. So if you had difficulty you will have to go back to chapter 2 and examine 
uh, these things. Okay. So let's let's do this in uh, purple. Now, as an assignment, I want you to calculate the number of grams hydrogen, grams carbon, and grams oxygen in seventy five grams of C twelve H twenty. This is very neat. Okay, you want to calculate that in 75 grams of C12 C12 H22 O 11. Okay. Now I want you to do that as a homework assignment. So we have grams hydrogen, grams carbon, and grams oxygen. I want to know how many of those are present in 75 grams of C12 H22O11. Okay, so if you can't see that, let me try to write this a little neater. That is still getting used to my little board here. The C12 H22O11. Okay, and it's 75 grams of that. So, how much is present in 75 grams of C12H22O11? Now I want you to calculate the number of grams hydrogen, grams carbon, and grams oxygen for homework. I want you to practice that problem. So that should give you some practice going from grams to moles and some practice going from moles in a compound to atoms in a compound. And let me give you one hint to help just in case have a little problem getting started so just say hint so just for grams of hydrogen we want to go from grams of C12 H twenty two O eleven to moles of C twelve H twenty two O eleven to moles of hydrogen to grams of hydrogen. Now that's my hint for hydrogen. I want you to do it for hydrogen carbon and oxygen.
all three for homework starting with 75 grams okay if you have any problems questions or comments bring them to class bring them to the tutoring sessions on Monday and Wednesday from 1 to 4 or bring them to the tutor that you have been assigned if you need a tutor please let me know after class if you cannot attend the sessions on Monday Wednesday and Thursday let me know and I will try to get you a tutor